Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 25 of my Pro Tools video tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to do basic drum replacement um, and layering with a uh, edit function called uh, Tab to Transients. Now, what Tab to Transients does, and you make sure you can turn it on here, otherwise this won't work, is using your selector tool, you can click on a track and you can hit the Tab key on your keyboard and it will jump to it'll jump the the playhead to the next transient the next identifiable transient uh, in the waveform so this is helpful for editing because if i want to sort of pinpoint an exact sort of drum hit i can click somewhere uh, before it hit tab and i can hit b to separate it and then click tab again to move on to the next transient hit b to separate that and you can identify one single sample or or uh, identifiable, uh, identifiable transient in the uh, in the waveform. Um, there's a few added features uh, with some extra key commands. Uh, so, for instance, if you hit Tab, it tabs forward. If you hit Hold Option and Tab, it tabs backward. If you hold Shift while tabbing, it makes a selection while tabbing. And if you hold uh, Option and uh, Shift, it makes a selection backwards while tabbing. Um, we're not really going to use it for that function. We're going to use it to copy and paste in a sample for each one of these uh, drum hits. Um, so let's let's take a listen to what we have here. This is live drums. If you hear a little bit of a bleed from the singer in the background, it's because we record this band live. They're not exactly on the grid. Actually, they're not on the grid at all. They kind of just played to their own time. Um, so this is another added advantage of Tab to Transients is we're going to be able to detect where our drum hits are off of the grid. So let's just listen to a little bit of this. All right. So the drums aren't bad. I mean, there's hardly anything on them at the moment. Um, these guys are looking for a very, very sort of bluesy, organic sound. So I don't want to overdo my production uh, on these drums. But I, the the two things that stand out most to me in pretty much any rhythm and blues or rock track or really any 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 pop track even is the kick and the snare. Those two things really need to come out to me. Um, and even if we and th again with these guys, they want sort of an, a more organic bluesy sound. I still want the kick and snare to, to sort of pop out a little bit more. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to layer our kick track with a sample of a kick drum, a, a better quality recording, because our kick drum right now is kind of thuddy. But it's not really that consistent. I want the, the you know, that four on the floor or whatever it is, or that was it uh, one and three um, to really stand out. Um, so I have this kick sample here. It sounds like this. Sounds sort of like a 1980s heavy metal kick drum. Um, we're not going to overdo this. We're going to put, we're going to layer this sample really, really low in the mix just to give the, the overall kick drum a little bit more definition. So there's another set of key commands that we can use with, with tab to transients that are really, really useful. Um, before in, in previous episodes, we talked about the, um, the key focus mode up here that basically allows you to shorten some of your, your shortcuts. Um, so one of the, the shortcuts uh, that's shortened is your copy and paste and, and cut functions. Instead of having to press control X or control C or control V to cut, copy and paste, you can just hit X, C or V. Um, so that's kind of useful. You can click on something, hit C to copy it, click somewhere else and hit just V to paste it. Another uh, another um, key focus mode function that's really useful to tab to transients is you don't actually have to hit the tab key to tab anymore. Um, instead of using the tab key to tab around and then holding option to tab backwards, you can actually hit the apostrophe or quotation key to tab forward. You can hit the L key to tab backward. 
you can hit the um, uh, co uh, colon semicolon to tab down, and you can hit the P button to tab up. So you see where I'm going with this? What we're going to do is we're going to copy in this kick drum into the clipboard, and we're going to tab over to the first kick drum, hit L to t or not L, hit uh, semicolon, uh, semicolon to tab down, hit V to paste, hit P to tab back up, move over to the next kick drum, down, paste, up. And you just keep repeating that process for all the kick drums. Now, I've listened to this recording several times, so I know which... Um, which of these transients are kick drums and which aren't. Um, but you basically just have to listen, listen to it and um, to identify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this whole section here. And I'm just going to follow that same process. Tab right, tab down, paste, tab up. And again, I'm skipping all these little transients in between because they are snare drums or bleed from the kicked mic. I rarely use the tab back unless I have to, but it's kind of convenient not to have to uh, hit option in order to do so. All right, so I think I got it. So generally what I'll do is um, we just mute the original sample. It's Command uh, M, by the way. And let's listen to just the, our sample kick with our original kick track, and I'm gonna pull the sample kick way down in the mix. I don't wanna hear a, a ton of it. There we go. So the way I'm seeing this is the um, the original kick track going to sort of be like the body, like the meat of it, and my replacement track sort of going to be the definition. I'm going to blend those two things together. Let's see what this sounds like with all the drums in. And then let's mute it and listen without. So I really like the way that that um, gives the, the kick drum a little bit more definition. Um, and what we do is uh, optimally we'd sit here and do this through the whole song. But just for this short video, I'm just going to do this one little section. All right, let's do the same thing with the snare drum. I've got this snare sample right here. Um, this is sort of the opposite issue. Um, this, the snare drum tracks have a lot of bite to them, a lot of brightness. But they don't really have a, enough body to them. So our snare drum here is going to, our snare sample here rather, is going to be sort of like our body. Um, now with the snare drum, there's other factors in, involved. Like, first of all, there's a lot more bleed in your snare track than, than your kick track. So it's going to be a little more difficult to isolate just the snare hits. Um, once you do this for a little while, you can start looking at waveforms and you'll know which ones are actually snare hits and which ones aren't. Like I know these are kick hits and these are rim taps on the snare drum, but not actual snare hits. So that's another thing to distinguish is different uh, ways to play the snare. Sometimes the snare drum will have little three stroke and two stroke rolls in them or flams and other other techniques that you sort of have to skip over. And this is why blending the original track with uh, our sample track is really the best the best uh, course of action here because we can still maintain some of the, the things that we can't um, resample properly. So let's copy in our new snare drum to the clipboard. I'm going to mute the original. And we're going to go along just the same way we did before. Just hit tab over. And out. these are all kick hits and rim taps. Here's our first actual snare hit. Paste that in. And again, I'm sort of just ignoring the stuff in between the actual snare hits. You know, this whole, this whole process can be time consuming, but... Um, one of the the huge advantages to doing it this way is uh, not really ta time is not the advantage because you can you can get drum replacement software that'll do this for you. Um, the adv the real advantage is first of all it's it's a cheap way to do it without having to buy any drum replacement software. If you're just looking to do like basic drum layering like I'm doing here, um, the other advantage too it's very very accurate. It's time accurate. A lot of drum replacement software I've used is not phase accurate. Sometimes the 
the samples that are replaced don't always perfectly match up where they're supposed to. Um, the other downside to doing it this way is that sometimes uh, with samplers, you can um, control other things like velocity controls or round robin controls where you alternate the sample, which you can't really do here. All right, so let's listen to uh, just our snare tracks. Good, and again, I pulled the snare drum down in the mix again, just to, I wanna blend the snare drum under our original snare tracks. So let's see what all the drums sound like now. And then again, without them. So again, you have the freedom to sort of downplay those samples or upplay them any way you want, depending on the genre of the music. You can mix them into the mix them into the song any way you want. You can EQ them any way you want. It just gives you an additional isolated source to work with so that you can make uh, the, his drum performance sound uh, even better than it was. All right, so as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing. And if you'd like to take your support a step further, I'm now on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Your contribution will help keep this channel going. And I also have a lot of new things in store for the channel for 2016, and including a dedicated music tech help guy website where you can access content and material related to posted videos like sessions and files and whatnot. And I also have a plan on moving all my videos up to 1080p resolution as well. So thank you for the support and thanks for watching.